Welcome once again to Sacred Ground Watering Beneficial Seeds. I'm Michael Malley. And I'm Ollie Malley. And today we're going to talk about fear and fearlessness. And we'll start out with a short meditation. Michael will do the reading today, mm -hmm. do another short meditation, a Dharma talk, and a final short meditation. We invite you to breathe in and out to feel the breath coming into your body and to release it. Notice the tension leaving your body. One more time, breath in and release, breathe out. Today's reading is from Chogyam Trungpa's book, Shambhala, The Sacred Path of the Warrior. In order to experience fearlessness, it is necessary to experience fear. The essence of cowardice is not acknowledging the reality of fear. Fear can take many forms. Logically, we know we can't live forever. We know that we are going to die. So we are afraid. We are petrified of our death. On another level, we are afraid that we can't handle the demands of the world. This fear expresses itself as a feeling of inadequacy. We feel that our own lives are overwhelming and confronting the rest of the world is more overwhelming. Then there is abrupt fear or panic that arises when new situations occur suddenly in our lives. When we feel that we can't handle them, we jump or twitch. Sometimes fear manifests in the form of restlessness, doodles on a notepad, playing with our fingers, or fidgeting in our chairs. We feel that we have to keep ourselves moving all the time, like an engine running in a motor car. The pistons go up and down, up and down. As long as the pistons keep moving, we feel safe. Otherwise, we're afraid we might die on the spot. There are innumerable strategies that we use to take our minds off of fear. Some people take tranquilizers. Some people do yoga. Some people watch television or read a magazine or go to a bar to have a beer. From the coward's point of view, boredom should be avoided. Because when we are bored, we begin to feel anxious. We are getting closer to our fear. Entertainment should be promoted. And any thought of death should be avoided. So cowardice is trying to live our lives as though death were unknown. There have been periods in history in which many people search for a potion of longevity. If there were such a thing, most people would find it quite horrific. If they had to live in this world for a thousand years without dying, long before they got to their thousandth birthday, they would probably commit suicide. Even if you could live forever, you would be unable to avoid the reality of death and suffering around you. Fear has to be acknowledged. We have to realize our fear and reconcile ourselves with fear. We should look at how we move, how we talk, how we conduct ourselves, how we chew our nails, how we sometimes put our hands in our pockets uselessly. 
Then we will find something out about how fear is expressed in the form of restlessness. We must face the fact that fear is lurking in our lives, always, in everything we do. On the other hand, acknowledging fear is not a cause for depression or discouragement. Because we possess such fear, we also are potentially entitled to experiencing fearlessness. True fearlessness is not the reduction of fear, but going beyond fear. Unfortunately, in the English language, we don't have one word that means that. Fearlessness is the closest term, but by fearless, we don't mean less fear, but beyond fear. Going beyond fear begins when we examine our fear, our anxiety, nervousness, concern, and restlessness. If we look into our fear, if we look beneath its veneer, the first thing we find is sadness beneath the nervousness. Nervousness is cranking up, vibrating all the time. When we slow down, when we relax with our fear, we find sadness, which is calm and gentle. Sadness hits you in your heart and your body produces a tear. Before you cry, there's a feeling in your chest, and then after that, you produce tears in your eyes. You're about to produce rain or a waterfall in your eyes, and you feel sad and lonely, and perhaps romantic at the same time. That is the first tip of fearlessness and the first sign of real spiritual warriorship. You might think that when you experience fearlessness, you'll hear the opening to Beethoven's Fifth Symphony or see a great explosion in the sky, but it doesn't happen that way. In the Shambhala tradition, discovering fearlessness comes from working with the softness of the human heart. We're going to listen to the bell once more. Enjoy its beautiful sound. Let it bring you back to the present moment. Breathe in deeply. Release slowly. Breathe in deeply. Feel the air filling your lungs. Release it slowly. Feel your body relax. One more time in. And out. In today's reading, Chogyam Trumpa invites us to acknowledge our fear and hear as we're facing the coronavirus pandemic, fear is something that almost all of us are experiencing. But in this talk, which goes back, I think, to the 1970s, so over 40 years ago, 
this Buddhist teacher is telling us, inviting us to know that fear is always there. That it's below the surface. It's hidden with busyness. But it's always there. And what he's especially talking about, of course, is the fear of death and our own mortality. And I would add the fear that we hold, not just for ourselves, but the fear we have for others around us and their mortality, whether it be uh, someone with a compromised immune system, someone who's elderly, someone who's working on the front lines and hospitals. In one of the earlier talks, I, I juxtaposed um, depression and gratitude. And I find it sometimes helpful to, to think in terms of juxtaposing different words that are not usually put in contrast to each other. And Chogyam does that for us today, where he speaks of fear and sadness. He writes, If we look into our fear, if we look beneath its veneer, the first thing we find is sadness. So there's a couple of strong messages here. One is, this fear that you and I are experiencing was already there. Because we know we have a limited lifespan. We know the elders in our lives have a limited lifespan. We know that even our children and grandchildren have a limited lifespan. One of the things that I do as part of my spiritual practice is um, I connect in my prayer life, in my spiritual life, I try to connect with the ancestors. I have the great good fortune of being the youngest child on both sides of the family. So I have memories of rooms full of aunts and uncles. I had a lot of aunts and uncles. My parents' friends as well. And most of them are gone. I was very close with both of my grandmas. They were born in 1892 and 1882. And sometimes I'll pick a year like 1902 and think, wow, these old ladies in their print dresses who took care of me when, in the 1960s and 70s. In 1902, Grandma Cassoni was a, a little girl, 10 years old, in the small village of Lastomir in eastern Slovakia. And in 1902, my grandma Mally was a 20-year-old young woman born of Irish immigrant parents who grew up in western PA and was then moving to Youngstown. And in 1902, all the people who were around, all of my grandma's playmates in Slovakia, all of my Grandma's friends here in America, all of them are gone too. All the elders that they knew, some they admired, some they respected, some they didn't. All of the younger children or little children around, the pet dogs, the horses,
even the birds flying from tree to tree. I knew these two elderly women who knew a whole world that is completely gone. Except for some tortoises and some of the older trees, right? With or without the coronavirus, this world in 2020 will be completely gone eventually. And it's not that far off. 1902 is not that long ago. It's understandable that fear has arisen in us. And anxiety. But Chokyam Trungpa is inviting us to be spiritual warriors. That doesn't mean in battle with a gun or with a knife. But it means in this life battle with our hearts. I invite you to create a little space each day that allows for sadness. that allows for tears to well up in your eyes. Some of us are going to lose loved ones directly, hopefully not as many as some of the models predict. But in this time, we're invited to become different kinds of beings. We're invited to no longer run on automatic pilot. We're invited to take no one for granted. We're invited to live with our hearts wide, wide open. To be, as Chogyam Trungpa says, spiritual warriors. We're invited into transformation. Into becoming something more. Something that we were intended to be. People who love. Unashamedly. People who care who hold compassion even for that other guy on the other side of the street more than six feet away. We are thrown into this and none of us asked for it. But in this moment, We're invited to move beyond fear, to allow for sadness each day, but then also to allow for joy. To enjoy, if you have family in the home with you, to enjoy them, to enjoy this incredible natural world to connect with loved ones through the internet or phone. And to acknowledge the preciousness, the incredible preciousness of this very short time that we all have here with or without the coronavirus.
My grandmas lived into their 80s and into 98, up to 98. But their physical form here is now gone. I hope, I hope that you listening there are granted a long life. I hope I am as well. But whether we are or whether we aren't, we are invited to wake up and to be truly alive. We are invited to be spiritual warriors. Myself, breathing out. I smile, breathing in, acknowledging my fears, breathing out, moving beyond my fears. Breathing in, I'm solid. Breathing out, feeling soft. Breathing in, feeling stable. Breathing out, feeling calm. Breathing in, feeling open. Breathing out, feeling expansive. Breathing in, acknowledging this present moment. Breathing out, feeling firm. Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Acknowledging this present moment, breathing out, feeling here, feeling the now. 